everyone, what's up? This is Simon from the Ionic Academy and in this video I will show you how you can set up your own super app. So a super app is a combination of different micro front ends. Yeah, we're getting really fancy today and we're gonna set up a shell app with two little micro front ends inside. We're gonna combine them using module federation and in the end we will take this from the browser into a native mobile application using Capacitor and the federated Capacitor plugin. This video is also sponsored by Ionic, so go check it out if you haven't done it before. Ionicframework.com is the framework. If you wanna build native apps, you can check out Capacitor and if you want additional services on top check out Ionic AppFlow which is a CI CD platform with services for native mobile apps. Again using federated capacitor is as well part of Ionic Enterprise so it is a paid plugin however the start of this tutorial can be used completely for free up until the capacitor part so the whole process of setting up a micro front end and using module federation and making that work is epic in itself so let's dive right into it. All right, this is going to be epic. So let's set up our project to include micro front ends and then we're gonna integrate it into a native app. And we're gonna use create MF app for this, but first we're gonna do uh, mkdir super app. So we're gonna get a new directory and then I'm gonna go into that one. So um, let's start npx create MF app. And we can now select from different options. So I'm gonna call this one, actually I'm gonna call this shell. Um, this will be somewhat required for the capacitor package in the end, but you can also later rename it if you wanna call it host. Um, this will be an application. It will use 8080, it will use React, and I will use TypeScript and Tailwind. So um, this should now set up a simple shell folder. And we're now gonna do this two times again. Um, because the script here by Jack is pretty awesome. By the way, if you haven't checked him out, Jack Harrington, I've been on uh, the React podcast, React Roundabout podcast as well. His channel is also Epic uh, Blue Collar Coder on YouTube. Go check that out and subscribe. Highly recommend it. Uh, I love his voice. Anyway, um, with this Epic package, let's do this again. So np create app, I'm gonna call this one about. So this will be like, could be your about page or your about uh, whatever. Uh, port number should be something different. So I'm gonna use 81. I will again use React and uh, TypeScript, but this time just CSS. And I'm gonna do it one more time for a simple uh, vanilla JS component. Let's call this one list. It's an application as well. It will use 8082, so once again, a different port. Um, then I'm gonna use vanilla, so you can also have different other frameworks, but let's keep it simple. Uh, we're gonna use JavaScript and CSS. And now let's see what we got. So we got one big project with three potential micro front ends. So we got one shell application, and alongside it, we got our two micro front ends. That's also how we could see this. Uh, let's first of all see how we can actually start our applications. Now, we would have to go into each of those folders. So we have to go into about run npm install. And then I can serve this app simply by running npm uh, run start or something. Let's see. Uh -huh, npm, npm start, will this work? Probably yes. So it brings up my about page. Look at 8081 about React TypeScript, cool. Let's open two more shells. So I'm gonna go into my list page and, oh, come on. Gonna do the same npm install. And after I've done npm install, I'm gonna do npm start, which will bring up my list at 8082. Cool. Now the third one is the host, or actually the shell in this case. I'm gonna go with the installation and npm start. And then you have three epic entry points to create your project. So we got 8080, we got 8081. Uh, this is the shell with React and Tailwind. We got the about one and the list one. And all of these already come with a Webpack config so we can easily include module federation to combine them under our shell application. And that's the next thing we wanna do. Um, before we combine them, um, do we first wanna combine them or first change them? Let's actually change them a tiny bit. So for the about 
component. I don't want to use simply the app because that might cause some problems. I would just want to have a blank component. So I'm going to add a new file and I will call that one about.tsx. So this could be whatever kind of component. I will simply render a component with my cool about page and uh, blue background and white text. This will, I think, actually work because we're using TypeScript on the outer app. Well, well we're going to see. That's going to be interesting. Now, there's a change we need to make to make this work, and that is inside the Webpack configuration. So first of all, I'm going to actually comment out this output because this will cause some problems later on when we use federated capacitor. And then I'm going to scroll down here to the module federation plugin. And what we want to do is we want to now expose our about page or our about component so it can be used in other um, apps. And we do it exactly like this. We're going to expose it as about and the source or the, the path is source about. So source about. That's where it is. Uh, besides that, we can leave everything the same. Now, let's do the same for our uh list component which is using just uh, vanilla js in fact we have to change this up a tiny bit because this will just try to get the element by id and if we want to include it that's usually not going to work so instead we will create a function which gets an element and then we can set the inner html of that element that works a lot better in the context of our micro front ends on top of that, let's add some simple styling to the index CSS. So giving some color to the list items. And again, open Webpack config, comment this out because it breaks federated capacitor. Go down and expose the list we just created, which comes uh, actually not from source list. So uh, Copilot, you nearly got me there. Uh, this comes from source app JS now. Um, this also changes how we can later include this. Um, to make those changes work for the list and about page, I'm going to have to restart them. I mean, the live reload here, I think, works, uh, but we still need to refresh that. So, so far, no big changes, although 8082 is not really working great anymore, but that's not a problem. And the interesting thing now is that we now have this remote entry. So you, you can just append this here to check if it works. Also for list, so it's not everywhere. For example, if I go to the shell, there's no remote entry. But because we defined the remotes, we now got this remote entry file from which we can get this micro front end and include it in our shell application. And that's exactly what we want to do now. So with those list and about in place, let's go to the shell. Let's close everything we had here. Uh, 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 and go to the shell. So in the shell webpack config, just like before, I want to comment out this part. I don't trust it anymore. <laughs> I just don't want to have it. And we go down to the module federation plugin. And instead of exposing something, we will now define the remotes that can be consumed by this application. So Copilot already brings up the general structure. So um, probably we're going to use it, but we will call this one about. And it will be about at where the about thing is running. I think it was 8081, right? And so the second one should be clear as well. Uh, yeah, not home. Thank you, Copilot. Uh, it should be list at 8082 remote entry. So now that we've configured these, let's go to our app TSX. And we can now probably, that would be fun, like keep this open on the side. Uh, let's put this up here and make this a tiny bit smaller. Uh, I should really have like a script for that. And now we can include our about and our list component in the shell or in the host, whatever you want to call this. So let's import them. And we're going to import about from about slash about. You will now notice something. Um, first of all, that my spelling is horrible. And then you're going to notice that TypeScript does not really like this. So in order to make TypeScript happy, you need to add some uh, type declarations. You can do this in different ways. Uh, the easiest way would be to just create a new file in here. Uh, and Third time it works. <laughs> and then let's call this uh, remote declaration dot d dot ts. And I'm going to just declare the module about and list. And once I hit save, this will be a lot happier. Now, let's get rid of the stuff in here. 
uh, let's just change this to something instead. So I'm gonna give a bit of styling here. Uh, can we close everything? Um, is this one too much? Oh yeah, okay, so here is my host app. This is green background. And in my host app, I'm not gonna include the about component that we defined uh, in our other micro front end, I think it was 8081. Uh, I think we can't just go to about, the, yeah, that won't work, but let's see. Uh, module not found, can <laughs> Okay, I simply added react to my about page and voila, we finally have a cool about page right here inside. And of course, I could now go ahead and change this. So my test about page. Uh, if I now refresh, I see the change of my other project in my shell application. Now, the last thing we wanted to do is we wanted to also, of course, include the list. So let's do this list from list. And this is a bit more complicated as we defined in the list a function that renders on one element. So we're gonna need a tiny bit different approach in here as we're gonna use a ref in here. So let's change this to a body of our application. And we're gonna use use ref from react. And we're gonna add one new element which we'll use for the reference our list ref. And once we uh, start our app, we're gonna add a use effect hook in here. And within we're gonna grab, well, that's almost right, not completely. <laughs> um, what I wanna do is I wanna call the actual list function on our list ref dot current. So this will mount our element hopefully on the app uh, let's see, we should put this now into a real return statement to satisfy the body. And then we also get our list in here. I really love this. Like, I, I feel like I want to start all my future projects just like this. It just feels so good. We have the three apps in here. We have two micro front ends and the shell application. And I can now, or if I work with other people, I could easily give them a specific component and they can change or do whatever they want in that folder and it will contribute to the main application. So I could just have item three in here and refresh and get the latest from localhost. Now, all of this works great locally and you can also deploy this to the web and make it work uh, with S3 or wherever you wanna host those different micro front ends. However, if you now talk about native applications, it's gonna be complicated. Because first of all, there's not really like local host where you can load your different micro front ends from. And also if you load all the content of your app from some remote source, uh, Apple might not be happy about that. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna add federated capacitor, which falls under the hood of Ionic portals. So Ionic portals would be the way to include these micro front ends with web technologies into native iOS and Android applications. And we're gonna do basically the other approach, um, which is using micro front ends. Well, it's a bit more complicated. It's simply a flavor of portals that now works with module federation for native apps. So to make this work, uh, there are a few things. So first of all, you need to install the Ionic Enterprise Federated Capacitor plugin. You can only do this if you have an enterprise account. So this is a paid plugin. Um, I got one for testing. So let me install this, including my Ionic key. All right, so I included the enterprise plugin and now we need to set up our shell application for um, Capacitor. So let's first of all install Capacitor Core and the Capacitor CLI. And then we can follow this up with npx cap init, which initializes our shell application. I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use dist for the web asset directory. And now I can configure um, the different modules for our, uh, where is it, in the capacitor config. I can now configure the different plugins in here. So I'm just gonna put in plugins, federated capacitor. I don't have a live updates key, we're gonna talk about that in a second, but the shell is the shell app, so this is also what caused problems with the host app before. And then we have our two apps that should be included, about and dist. On top of that, we need two additional packages now. Uh, or first of all, you should probably install the according capacitor Android and capacitor iOS packages and follow this up by calling cap at iOS and Android, which will add the native iOS and Android folders. 
But now we need to make sure that when we build for Capacitor, we actually include bundled versions of our micro front ends. So we now install cross-env and npm run all to run different scripts at once. And let's head over now to our package JSON because in the package JSON, I'm going to add a few little changes. So I'm going to change how we build the app here in our super app and I'm going to add two new scripts. So the two new are just going into our micro front end and running the build command. And then I changed the overall build command to use the run all command for build about and build list. So those two micro front ends are built first. Then we use the cross end package to set cap build to true. And then we run the build on our uh, host application here or the shell. Okay, so far so good. Now we can get this is cap build value in our webpack config of the shell app. And this part is really important now because here we're testing. Are we using that flag? If we don't do this, so we're configuring for local development because we still want to build our app locally and run in the browser, then we're just going to set this to whatever we had before. But in the other case, if we're built for a bundled application with Capacitor, we're going to set this to a different syntax using this. And this is where Federated Capacitor will do the magic and inject our micro front end into a native application. So with that in place, we now just need to scroll down and instead of using it like this, uh, I'm just going to set my remotes to be the remotes object. So this would be remotes, remotes. Okay. And uh, this is just the short form for it. Uh, this is shell, so everything looks fine. And now let's do this. npm run build. This should, in theory, build our about. This should build our list. And it should finally build our shell application. Um, OK, it failed because webpack config is kept build is not defined. OK, that's a valid concern uh, because I wasn't reading the value from uh, our environment. So let's do it like this again. So is kept build comes now from process environment kept build. And this should hopefully finish successfully. OK, warning, that's not a big problem. Let's run npx cap sync. This will sync your dist folder with all the web assets into the native iOS and Android folders. Then I'm just going to open Xcode because I want to run this. Uh, let's run this on an iPhone 14 Pro. So here is my iPhone. And in theory, we might now be able to see the micro front ends working in here if we did everything right. I never did this or let's say it never worked <laughs> for me on first try, right? Uh, so that's actually good because then we can do a little bit of debugging together because I'm pretty sure it will happen for you as well uh, as this is really easy. It's like it's more challenging than configuring deep links. So with Safari, we can open the web inspector and check what's going on. So right now, um, I feel like we're not loading anything in our application. Um, it's not even doing like not loading anything. There should be something in here. So I feel like something is generally wrong in the first place. Uh, we're in our shell. So let's just try and um, run the build again because I really had some caching issues before. Uh, I just want to make sure that it's not about that. Follow this up by npx cap sync which again should sync your dist folder into Xcode. You can actually uh, check this out in Xcode if you go to uh, your app, uh, app public. So under there, you should actually see uh, the files from list, from shell and from about. That's usually a good sign um, to get started. However, it didn't work so far. The file index.html couldn't be opened because there's no such file. Yeah, I completely agree. I can't see an index file in here either. Uh, it's only in the shell application. So let's figure out what could cause that. OK, so it finally works. But honestly, I just did a few NPM run build and cap syncs. And I'm not sure. I think it was sort of a caching issue. And now we can see the final result, which is, well, it's not super exciting. It is a native app built with Capacitor. You already know probably that you can build Epic apps with Capacitor, but this is a combination of our micro front ends of module federation in a native mobile application. So I can start this and everything is bundled in this application. 
which wouldn't work if we wanted to try and load stuff from localhost in a native application. So this is the first great thing about federated capacitor. Now, the second epic thing comes once you combine this approach with actually using uh, live updates from Ionic AppFlow. So if you haven't used this before, AppFlow is another uh, enterprise service from Ionic where you can connect your repository and with every build or commit, you can trigger an update over the air to your application. You don't have to go through the App Store. Now, think about this in terms of federated capacitor. If you configure the live updates for the different shells and the different applications of your project, what you can do, like every team that is working on one specific micro front end can create their own releases which make their way into the native application without the user updating the app, without the main app being updated, without any other complicated steps. And that makes Federated Capacitor really, really epic. So go check out how you can use this. Um, you might have to configure a different project if you're not using just a mono repository. But it is certainly possible uh, like this for the different apps to have different live update configurations set up for Ionic AppFlow. Again, this is a paid enterprise service for Ionic, same as Ionic Portals and the Federated Capacitor plugin. But I think for distributed teams and applications that are combined of micro front ends into one super application, this is definitely worth the money. Oh! Alright, and that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did. There are a lot of step stones where you can stumble and have problems. And honestly, I, this was the third or the fourth time that I did it. And every time something went wrong. Yes, there will be problems in connecting the different micro front ends and making everything work. But once you get the setup really figured out and it works with the different micro front ends under one shell, I feel this is an epic approach and it can be really, really helpful if you're working with a big company with different teams working on different micro front ends, using different technology stacks and combining everything with federated capacitor in one app. So again, check out Ionic Framework, check out AppFlow and Capacitor if you want to build great native mobile applications from micro front ends or just from one code base or iOS, Android and everywhere the web runs. If you enjoyed this, also of course leave a like, hit subscribe and I will catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.